Hello again, Water in Intake Facilities Commission and the viewing public. My name is Christina Walter. I'm the Permitting and Outreach Manager for the Willamette Water Supply Program. Welcome to our second WIF video tour, an update where we'll look at the progress on the Willamette Intake Facilities improvements and also for the Willamette Water Supply System. We will also explain how these improvements will increase the reliability and resiliency of these critical water supply facilities. Our last video tour focused on riverbank stabilization and other efforts at the site. In this tour, we'll look at modifications to the existing raw water pump station and intake infrastructure at the Willamette River Water Treatment Plant. Following this tour for the WIF Commission, we'll post this to social media to, to educate the public. The Willamette Intake Facilities, or WIF, is the water supply infrastructure on the Mid Willamette River in Wilsonville. It is the sole intake that cr currently provides water for Wilsonville and Sherwood and will provide water for the Tualatin Valley Water District and the cities of Hillsborough and Beaverton starting in 2026. The city of Tiger is a WIF partner but does not utilize Willamette River water as a drinking water source. These communities came together to form a regional partnership to oversee the WIF construction, maintenance, and operations. It's the starting point for an additional reliable and resilient drinking water supply for the region. With me today is Brent Simmons, Key WIF Infrastructure West Company. Let's start our tour with safety. Brent, COVID-19 continues to be a challenge for construction sites. Tell us some of the ways this site is adapting and with this in-water work, take, take some time to share with us about safety at the dive site. Hey, thank you, Christina. You know, safety is a uh, core value and integral part of Kiewit's culture. Um, our nobody gets hurt um, approach to safety starts in design process and is practiced every day through project completion, and that is including the public safety. Um, ways that we do this is we meet with the new hires and go through new or higher orientation and training, um, hazard identification and communication on all our all our different types of work, um, our craft ownership, and then public safety. Now this craft uh, craft um, engagement really starts with our craft voice and safety team. Um, their mission statement is that the craft voice and safety creates a culture where everyone has a voice. Craft are taking care, taking care of craft and a partnership with management through ownership, communication, and prevention to achieve our goal of nobody gets hurt. And this, this has really helped with the continued um, restrictions and changes with our COVID and with the craft engaged with safety and really taken a big part in safety, it's been easy to adjust to everything that's um, been um, put out to us um, by the Center of Disease Control and the Oregon Health Authority guidelines. Um, as far as our safety down at the dive site, um, you know, we've hired a very qualified contractor to be able to go out and, and do this work, um, taking in mind that we've got to keep things safe for the public that are out on the river also. And they do this by um, buoys out in the water and lights and keep the area restricted off so that no boaters can come into the area. Not only does it keep the boaters safe, but also keeps our contractors safe out on the water. Christina, now that our viewers have a greater appreciation of safety at this work site, let's tour around. The WIF sits on the Willamette River in Wilsonville, about one half mile west of the Interstate 5 bridge and more than 12 miles upstream of the Willamette Falls. The facilities consist of the river intake screens, the intake pipeline, and the raw water pump station structure on the bank. The intake screens sit underwater in the river and are connected to the raw water pump station by a single pipe that tapers from 95 inches at the intake screens to 76 inches in diameter leading to the shore. During a major seismic event, 
such as a Cascadia subduction zone earthquake, these elements must withstand the shaking to maintain water services to the intake partners. Our last tour featured the riverbank stabilization and construction of a tunnel beneath Arrowhead Creek and other work at the site. In this video, we'll focus on the work at the intake and raw water pump station. Brent, why don't you walk us through what's going on at the site? Following the work to stabilize the soil along the riverbank, the crews have now shifted to the retro work to stabilizing the nearby raw water pump station. The pump station houses the raw water pumps for both the Willamette water supply system and for the water treatment plant that produces potable water for the city of Wilsonville and Sherwood. Protecting this structure is of critical importance for the water supply and reliability. The original bricks in this building were carefully removed in pre-cut sections to make way for new engineered walls. Crews have worked their way around the pump station, removing these wall sections and leaving behind a shell for the new fortified walls. The crews have also started on forming up these walls and pouring these concrete walls on the pump station. These concrete slabs are reinforced with rebar, adding significant strength. Other improvements at the site include the trail improvement. Crews have widened and paved a trail leading to the river for the community to enjoy. Now that we've looked at the raw water pump station, let's travel to the riverbank to look at work on the intake. In August, crews began preparing to work in the river. A specialty crew of six from Harbor Offshore arrived to prepare to do this work. An approximate 100 ton barge was assembled at the river to serve as a platform for the operations that would be taking place on the river and at the intake. Each crew member is trained in diving, underwater welding, and specialized in underwater construction. As work on the barge continued, the new intake screens arrived on site. The new larger screens are necessary to allow additional water to be withdrawn from the Willamette River to accommodate the new water supply system capacity while protecting the fish at the same time. The screens are made at a factory in Owensboro, Kentucky. Each screen is 78 inches in diameter and 20 feet long and made of 3 16 stainless steel. The steel used for these screens is a special type of steel that can resist corrosion more than other forms of steel. This makes these screens very durable for underwater use. Before the screens are installed, crews cast off on their maiden voyage for the first work activity, driving large steel protection piles into the riverbed surrounding the intake structure area. A total of uh, 10 H-beam piles were loaded onto the barge for the installation. Each massive pile is 62 foot long in length, and each of them weighs three tons. The barge moored in the river and a barge-mounted crane that drove these piles. The piles protect the intake and fish screen, helping to block trees and other debris that could be in the river following an earthquake or other extreme river conditions. After the initial work and the piles were driven, crews focused on preparing the intake for the new fish screens. The Willamette River Water Treatment Plant operator conducted a planned shutdown for the plant to allow these crews to begin this work. The carefully choreographed shutdown was important to make sure that the divers could safely complete the work. The first item for the crew was to remove the old undersized fish screens, perform pipe cleaning, and prepare the intake for the new fish screens. Divers loaded the old fish screens onto the barge and brought them back to the shore where they could be unloaded. This allowed for the new screens to be placed onto the barge and the installation to begin. As part of the work, crews removed small diameter pipes from underwater that serve as part of the fish screen cleaning system. The air burst pipe is an important component of the intake and the new pipe is being installed along with the new fish screens. In parallel with this work, the crew installed the first of the new fish screens, making a significant milestone for the operations. Christina, now that we've caught up on some of these activities, let's join one of the, the divers of this operation who is going to give us a unique look at this work. Hey Brent, welcome to the barge. This is Mark Girdlestone with Harbor Offshore. 
Heard you guys would like a little tour, so I'm going to grab this camera and I'll show you around the deck. All right, Brett, this is starting up on top here. This is all of our diving equipment. That blue piece of machinery is uh, one of our diving compressors that supplies the air to the diver. This over here is our uh, welding machine for doing all our underwater welding. And then we also have a hydraulic HPU back there that runs the spuds on the barge. Take you into our dive shack real quick. This is where uh, we run all the dives during our diving operations. Got a little window to see out and we have our uh, two communication boxes there. That's how I talk to the divers. And then right here is a TV that can see what the diver sees. And this right here is actually the underwater camera and light system that we use. This is our fabrication area where we do all the uh, fabricating for all the underwater equipment or steel going back in the water. This room here is a little bit messy right now, but this is the changing room for where the divers get dressed into their uh, hot water suits. Moving out to the barge, we have the crane, of course, that's doing all the heavy lifting out here. We got these fish screens that weigh about 10,000 pounds each. So that kind of helps us out picking those up. And here's one of the fish screens. This is one of the new ones that we're going to be installing. This one here is the inshore T-screen. And over here we have uh, another piece of equipment. This is called a jet pump. It uses water pressure to help us dig down where we need to go. And then of course some of our uh, diving hoses and underwater burning gear. All right, here I am standing over the uh, underwater job site. It's just behind me and of course below water. Uh, let me uh, give you a little tour of what we got going on down there. So first thing in the morning, we get a diver dressed in and he goes down on the river bottom and takes a big blind flange off and accesses the, the pipeline to start doing the uh, seismic repairs. And then we got guys that are supporting him and shortly thereafter we get a second diver in the water to do work outside the pipeline. So we got six guys that are part of the dive team. We also have a crane operator and an oiler. So the dive team consists of two divers, two tenders, a rack operator that runs the dives from the dive shack, and then another guy that runs around and kind of supports wherever he can. And those roles change throughout the day, so everybody's a diver on this project and everybody's a tender on this project. All right, Mark, go ahead, you're recording. All right, Brett, this is uh, Mark, out on the barge on the Willamette, getting ready to uh, show you guys the uh, underwater portion of this job site. All right, Mike, I'm leaving surface. All right, Mike, go ahead and light me up. Visibility is not that great today, but we'll show you what we can show you. This is one of your protection piles right here. You got your new T screen that was installed. This is the offshore T screen here. You got another one of your protection piles. This will be your downstream side of everything. Coming up on our blind flange here. This is where the uh, inshore T-screen will end up living. Alright, Mike, let's go ahead and come down on the crane. Roger. While I'm waiting on the crane, this is the uh, new 12-inch airburst flange. It's part of the modification that we're doing for the airburst to get mounted up to the new T-screens. Let me 
walk over to uh, the new tee screen while we're waiting on that rigging. <clears throat> this is our down line here. That's how we get tools down to the divers and stuff, but this is your new and improved larger tee screen and what it looks like underwater. We're going to be switching all this hardware out for a brand new stainless steel, so that's why they're only 50%ed right now. But, uh, yeah. Rigging's on bottom mark. Yeah, Roger. Let's go ahead and start coming down on the load. Let's get on the crane, I'll stop. Stop on your swing. Just give you guys an idea. This is uh, going down inside the pipeline. This is the uh, inside of your pipeline here. Kind of gives you an idea. Kind of almost standing up, but not really. Got a nice mortared lining to it. Well, I guess uh, you can get some of my uh, welding gear coming down. We're done, man. Looking good? I think so. You're right on time. You got five minutes before you got to start cleaning up. All right. Send the hall back down. Well, we'll let the crews finish up cleaning up for the day. Looks like they've had their hands, they've got their hands pretty full. Thank you, Mark, and thank you for all those performing this work. This concludes our tour. We hope you've enjoyed this unique view into the amazing work at the site. Christina, this work is a historical importance for the region, and we're happy to play a part to help in its construction. This video gives us a rarely before seen look into these challenging activities. As crews finish this work, other teams will work on the rest of the construction to build out the rest of the raw water facility site. This project is just the beginning of a long-term partnership among the regional partners. The WIF Commission's mission is to re responsibly secure a safe and reliable Willamette River drinking water supply for our communities. The WIF Commission was developed to not only address the immediate WIF construction and startup needs, but to look to the future and build on the strength of multi-agency collaboration in support of Willamette River resiliency and vitality as a drinking water source. In July 2021, the Commission publicly affirmed its vision to become a trusted steward of the Willamette River watershed. The partners will continue to work together to provide expertise, resources, and science-based decisions to protect Willamette River water quality and supply. In July 2021, the Commission also adopted a strategic framework with three pillars to serve as a foundation to support its mission and vision and to bring, bridge its goals. These pillars focus on water quality, water supply stewardship, and effective WIF operations. For more information, please visit us online. Thank you for joining us on this tour.